Hi there, I've, um, I've had a couple people ask me about the new sewing machine and whether or not I like it or not. And um, the answer is yes, I love it. Um, I like it for, I love it as a sewing machine and I'm really just learning how to do the embroidery part. Um, but let me show you what I've made so far with the embroidery. Um, this is Simplicity Pattern 4364. Um, it's basically just a little blouse and, it, and it, the pattern comes with a skirt and whatever. But anyway, this was one of the um, first outfits I made with the actual, where I've gone from start to finish on an actual project itself. Let me see if you can see where I'm at. Okay, so this was um, one of the pre-programmed designs in the machine. Um, the machine comes with um, 120, uh, my eyesight's going bad, let me pull it forward a little bit. Comes with 120 um, frame pattern combinations, five alphabetic fonts, 70 built-in embroidery designs, 67 built-in sewing stitches, and 90 eight stitch, stitch functions. When you get the machine it'll give you your actual quick reference guide as far as um, what's in here as far as embroidery designs. If you go to the back um, you'll see them all, they have them all um, written out for you and what colors you can use that would match your different embroidery threads. Um, there's a uh, chart here that tells you um, what colors match with what, uh, this is like Madeira, Poly, Neon, Madeira Rayon, Sulky Rayon, RA Polyster, but those are your different embroidery threads. I'm just using my regular um, polyester thread right now because I haven't invested in any embroidery thread yet. The only uh, embroidery thread I've actually bought so far is this um, silver embroidery thread from um, Walmart. It's 317 a um, spool and it comes in copper, gold, bright gold, um, silver, and um, like an iridescent white, I guess you'd call it. Anyway, I've only tried a few of these. I've tried the Butterfly, the Flourish. Um, I've done this uh, uh, first embroidery pattern and this uh, floral. But anyway, here is... Um, your instruction booklet. Here's the fonts that you get. Um, the nice thing about this is it also has um, embroidery frames where you can put your little monograms inside um, like uh, heart frames. Um, I don't see the frames here but there is a whole bunch of different frames you can use if you're like monogramming um, towels or however you want to do it. Anyway I'll show you more as we get to it. And then your uh, regular operation manual that gives you um, information. Um, the frame that they give you in this machine is a five is a five by seven. Um, when you go online and you look up this machine, it'll only tell you that you can do only four by four designs. But I went to um, Amazon, and Amazon uh, for fifty dollars you get the set of all four frames that will fit on here the small three by three the four by four the five by seven and the next the large frame which um, I'm not sure exactly what the size is I think it's like ten inches or something like that I'm not sure also they give you um, the this is your um, embroidery foot uh, it's called the Q um, uh, it's sort of like a quilting foot but anyway, it, um, you push this little button, it helps you get it on, but you have to remove your entire foot off to put this on so you can use it. Um, as far as the uh, machine, it comes with um, one spool of um, your bobbin thread, and it's a very thin, I think it's called monofilament, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's very thin, and this is what you use when you use your embroidery, uh, when you're doing the embroidery. It comes with your extra large bobbins uh, for the bottom of your um, embroidery bobbin thread. Um, it holds a lot of thread. I've done so many and I haven't even changed the, this is the first time I've changed the bobbin and since I got the machine. And I've been just playing around with uh, different designs. Um, here is um, the one of the built-in designs. This is um, the Christmas uh, Noel um, 
uh, embroidery with Santa Claus holding a string of lights. Um, I wasn't crazy about this design because when I did the face on it, it it it, um, it, it, it came out white. So what I had to do is I took a pair, a little bit of uh, flesh colored thread and I uh, filled it in. But they're such beautiful designs. You can't believe the beautiful designs you can get for this machine. Um, I figured out how to download off the internet. Um, but um, I'll, I'll explain that later. Anyway, here's the same blouse. It's the same simplicity pattern. And this I just did a little um, a velour skirt with some fluff. And I put a little button in the back. to um, These um, tights were just a pair of um, silver um, socks I bought at the Goodwill in the new section. They were like 99 cents. So I cut them up and made a pair of tights out of them. And they look really cute with the silver designs. But anyway, this is the same pattern. The only thing is I use the green cotton for lining instead of the um, other color. Um, another thing with this one is I um, widened out the um, sleeves because it's because I'm lining these things. It's hard to pull them through like I did on the vest. So when I line these, I widened out the... Um, I was able to do it on this one, but it was a little tight. But here I widened out because I knew the velour would probably be harder to get through than the denim was. So I, I widened out the sleeve a little bit on this one. But it's all the same pattern. You can actually, if you don't want this little thing here on the bottom, the little diamond shape here, you can just cut that off and make it uh, straight across and you can make them longer. I mean, there's just so many things you can do. Anyway, here's some of the... Um, first attempts at embroidery that I was playing with on my machine. Here's the same butterfly and I did it in the, um, I did it on a plain cotton broadcloth and um, I didn't pull my fabric tight enough and look what happens. I got all kinds of puckers in there. I didn't like that at all so I didn't use this on anything. But um, it's really important when you frame your fabric up that you get it really tight. So anyway, here is some of my attempts. Um, this was another this was another floral design, but instead of using the colors that they chose, I um, uh, picked my own colors. So I thought this would be really cute with a pair of purple uh, uh, with a purple skirt or a purple pair of shorts. So I've cut that out, but I haven't made it up yet. This was um, this came from the brother's website, and this is called a woman on a bridge, and um, this was my first attempt to download a pattern, and I was surprised how easy it was. Um, what you do is you go, um, a lot of websites give you free patterns too. So um, what you do is you, uh, oops, I don't know what that was. Um, you go to uh, any website and you either purchase it or you take their free downloads. This was a free download, so all I did was, I don't even have to be hooked up to the machine, I just... Uh, went and I downloaded it and I saved it as a different file name and then once I did that and I had it on my computer I inserted this into my um, connection here and I put the other side into my USB and then um, when you turn it on it tells you do you want to download a pattern and then uh, it'll actually read it on the machine. It also has a slot for embroidery cards if you actually buy the design for embroidery. It goes on there. If you're wondering about this machine, it takes two different types of embroidery files. One is um, .pes and the other one is .dst. Those are the only two um, there was one more, but they said it doesn't work well. So um, if you're ever going to uh, get this machine, it'll be compatible with those embroidery files. So um, so that's that. That's your connection there. And then your regular, I took off my pressure foot. And then, um, because I'm going to control it with my button in front. And then your on-off switch. So that's pretty much it. Anyway, that is um, that was the embroidery I pulled offline. And there's a, a website on Facebook, too, that if you uh, like it, they, they'll give you free patterns on Facebook, too. 
So anyway, here's another attempt I made at that heart. This is what I'm going to do now, but I'm going to make them a little bit smaller so I can get them to fit. They'll fit on this pocket, but I want enough so I can have some design on top too. So I'm going to shrink this pattern a little bit on, on the demonstration. Here is another one of the original designs with the um, machine. It's like a, just a regular cross stitch design. This was the same pattern as that purple one, only I changed the color combinations. So instead of going with the purples, I went with the reds and blacks, thinking that I could um, make that blouse and use like um, a black bias tape for the sleeves and the neckline and the bottom and then make a pair of red and white shorts. I thought that would be a really cute outfit, but I haven't got to that yet either. So let's see. Oh, okay, so then um, to go with my pants, I'm going to, um, I, I, I bought an old pair of uh, uh, Levi's at uh, Goodwill, and I've been cutting it up and using it. But this one I did um, the heart, and I did a um, silver floor flourish, and I'm going to use that same pattern, and then I'm going to make a pair of shorts to go with it. But this time, instead of using the, um, because I knew I was going to really have to center this program, I got a sheet protector, and I traced my pattern on there, and um, I just widened um, the top about a quarter of an inch on each side, so it'll be easy to pull through when I make it. So since I've widened the, the um, front, I'm going to have to widen the back piece. But this will give me a, a good way of pinning this down and cutting it out so I can get the pattern. I can see through and know exactly where I want to place that um, pattern piece. All that is is a sheet protector copied with a magic marker. That's it. So that's going to be the next blouse I make with the pair of pants that I'm going to make. Okay, so that's... Um, I ran out of time on the last video and I just got cut off, so I don't want to do that on this video. So let me um, start with putting this um, on the um, machine. So um, let me see how close you are. Okay, I'm going to pull this around so you can see better. Let me see how much time I have. I'm probably going to have to do this in two videos. Whoops, sorry about that. Okay, so I'm going to take this. Oh, I did it again. Okay, I'm going to take this and I'm going to um, hook it on there and make sure that that bar is up over that um, um, crossbar. And then I'm going to tighten it. Let me turn the light on so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to tighten that. Okay, so I've unplugged the, uh, the, the foot and I'm going to control everything with this light right here. Okay, so there's that. Okay, so make sure you get it tight enough. Now, um, when you're using the um, embroidery, you want to use an embroidery needle, but um, I, I don't have one thick enough to get through denim, so what I'm using is the regular jean needle, and it seems to work fine, but I, if you're going to do embroidery, I would recommend using the actual embroidery um, embroidery. Uh, needles. But um, when you change your carriage, make sure you keep your machine turned off because um, your carriage has um, got a um, computerized attachment here and they want you to keep this clean. So if you want to keep the bag that it comes into originally or get one of those, um, oh, what are they, two gallon bags or something that so you can keep this clean because um, you're going to need that to stay clean because it hooks onto this machine. So go ahead and turn it off. They say you should always have your machine off and on when you put your carriage on. So let's go ahead and remove that. And then this one, it's very lightweight, and this one just slides right on here. But one thing you want to check before you do that is make sure that you... Um, oops, let me turn this around so you can see. Right here is your feed dog lever. So what you want to do is make sure your feed dogs are down because you don't your carriage is what's going to move your... Uh, 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 machine around. So this is with the up and this is with it down. If you're not sure you can turn it on and, and um, try to see your feed dogs. Let's see. Yeah, see your feed dogs still move but they don't they don't break the surface. Okay, here your feed dogs are up 
and you can feel them come up. So you want to make sure your feed dogs are off. Okay, so then go ahead and shut your machine back off and then insert your uh, uh, embroidery carriage. And it just slides on in until it hooks. Okay, so there's that. So I've got my embroidery uh, bobbin in I, with my uh, embroidery thread in the bobbin. And now I'm going to just go ahead and uh, insert my um, embroidery thread for the top. If you've ever noticed the embroidery threads, they're kind of um, rounded at the top. And the reason for is that they'll slide off and not catch. So um, I was using the small spool cap and it caught and it jammed my machine and it kept breaking my thread. So I went to the um, larger spool cap and I haven't had any trouble with thread catching and breaking. So you also want your thread to come up towards you over the top like this. So put it on, make sure you tighten your spool all the way so it's nice and snug in there. And then just go ahead and thread your machine. The nice thing about this machine is it's got a um, uh, right in the way. It's got a um, needle threader. So what you do is you just follow your numbers all the way down until you get to this part. You bring your thread up over this and across and then you just push and it gives you a loop behind the um, and you just pull out your thread. I can catch it with my finger. can't do it that way. Let me try this way. Okay, there you go. So what I've been trying to do is keep myself a little loop because what you want to do is you want to do about five stitches, shut your machine off, and then trim your thread. Let me stop there before I lose the, the camera turns off on me. Last video it turned off on me. Okay, so we'll do this and then I'll come back and we'll do the next part.